All right, good morning, folks. Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply. And uh, in today's video, we are going to make the Breezy Clutch. Um, but not only are we going to make it, we're going to cover it with cork. Um, here's a finished product right here. Uh, the, the Breezy Clutch is made pretty much the same, except we're going to cover the outside with cork. Um, cork does not burnish on the edges or anything, so we have to uh, fold it over the edges to make it look nice. Um, this cork fabric, uh, we've had folks have, have asked us about it before, and um, I had heard of it, and I was told once that it's the vegan alternative to leather. And while that really doesn't mean anything to me, because, well, I'm a leather worker, I don't worry about the vegan stuff, um, the, uh, we had a lady come to one of our classes and she made bags out of this cork stuff. And like I said, I'd heard of it before, but I'd never seen it in person, but her bags were amazing. They were really nice. And, um, the, the material, the cork material was really, really nice. And uh, so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a bunch in different colors and things like that and kind of see what we can do with it and if it's something we should offer in our store. Um, and the answer is yes, we are going to end up offering it in the store. It, it is nice stuff. Um, but we put it in this month's mystery box just to kind of show some other folks what it might be like. And um, here's what you're looking at. It is, it is a very thin layer of actual cork. Uh, and it's back to like a fabric, and that's what gives it a lot of strength. Um, it's not stretchy, it's not, um, and, and it's very strong. Because when I first heard that people were making things out of cork, I'm like, that's what I throw darts at, or what I shoot across the room out of a, out of a bottle. Um, and I didn't understand how something could be made out of it that was durable. Um, but now that I've, I've seen it and played with it, I, I do understand. And that's, again, that's why we put it in the mystery box is so that maybe others would see it as well. So in the mystery box, we put um, the Breezy Clutch as a template. This is the first time that we've offered it as a template and it will be on our website as a template um, here uh, today. Um, so our pieces that we have, this is the main uh, back and, and body piece. So like this whole, it folds all the way around to the front there. Um, we have the inside credit card pockets are made up of these two pieces. Um, and there's card pockets on each side of the zippered pouch. So there's card pockets here and there's card pockets back here. So lots of card pockets. Um, so you're going to cut two of each of these out of uh, two to three ounce leather. Um, this is the zippered center piece. So right in the middle of this wallet, as you saw, it's, um, it's got a zippered pouch. And then these are the gussets. Um, very easy to, to use. Once I figured out this pattern, I was so excited at, at the, the, the ease of use for it. So anyway, one of the things that I think is the best about this is like it's large enough, like there's my cell phone. That's a Galaxy S10, I guess. So I know iPhones and stuff like that, unless you've got some massive OtterBox on them, would fit inside this if, if you were to carry one. Um, yes, it is, I would suspect, predominantly a, a, a female clutch, but hey, if a dude wants to rock it, go for it. I'll support you. Um, so anyway. Uh, we're going to get busy uh, making this uh, making this project. And the first thing we have to do is cut out all of our pieces. So we've got our template. Uh, I'm not going to do the cork yet. It's going to be the very last thing I even cut out. Um, we've got a bunch of, I've got a bunch of leather pieces here because this is kind of scraps left over from making the boxes and um, you know, lots of bad spots and stuff on these particular pieces. So I'm using them so that someone else didn't have to. Um, I'll take one for the team there, I guess. So anyway, we need to find the thinnest ones because these vary in thickness here as well. Um, all of our interior pieces are going to be cut out of two to three ounce. And then generally, if you're just making the breezy clutch, the outside piece would be like a six to seven ounce. Um, however, since we are doing the, uh, the cork, 
Um, the outside is going to be a little bit thinner. It can be a th two to three ounce, four to five ounce, something like that. It can be a little bit thinner because we're going to wrap that cork around it and that will give it the structural integrity that it needs. So all that being said, I'm going to just go ahead and cut the, take the worst of the worst and I'm going to cut my zippered pouch out of it because most of it's going to be covered up by credit card pockets and things like that. Um, yeah. So there we go. So I'm just going to take and grab my scalpel over here. Cut out my uh, zippered pocket first. cut out but I also need to cut out that centerpiece where the zipper actually goes um, for this we're using one of our little uh, dress zippers that we sell now granted this is all natural veg tan had I taken the time this morning um, I would go dye this stuff but my airbrush is not set up and I don't want to drag all the video stuff out there to set it up so the inside of this particular clutch is just going to be natural veg tan um, so I'm going to grab a scratch all here and I'm just going to mark where my ends of my uh, zipper cutout are. Okay. Let me get down on the, I'm sorry. There we go. Bring it down some. All right. So I'm going to mark where my uh, zipper cutout is. And this is a 13, 30 seconds punch. I just grabbed a random one that looked about the right size. This one's actually a little bit small, so I'm going to move up to uh, maybe a half inch. 7 sixteenths, that's a little bit more of a normal size, I guess. So what I'll do is I'm just going to use my punch to punch out the ends of the zipper cutout. And then I'm going to use one of these extra pieces of template here as a straight edge. And I'll take my scalpel and I'll just connect the dots as far as cutting the lines out between those. Now when I do that, I want to make sure that I put my straight edge just off of it a little bit because once I've got that cut, I don't want you to see that it was two circle punches and then a cut. I just want you to see the cut. Um, it, it should be a perfectly oblong hole without circle punches. Almost got it all. I need a new blade on my scalp. All right, so there we go. So this is what I'm talking about right here. Um, right here, it's, it's difficult to see, but you can see it. You can tell that that was a circle punch and then a line cut right up there. Uh, it just doesn't match up right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recut that line just a little bit just to get rid of that so that I don't see that because that's going to just drive me bonkers thinking about it. Very hard to trim just the slightest little bit off, but there we go. Much nicer. All right. And uh, here in a little bit, we'll put our zipper behind that and, uh, and put it together. But right now, we're cutting stuff out. So we're just going to set it to the side. Okay. Now we need to cut out two of the, uh, it says card pocket A, cut two, two to three ounce. So I've already got a straight line right here, so I'm just going to caveat off of it here I guess and I don't know if that's the right word in speaking it would be but in practical usage I don't know okay 
Okay. So I need two of these, and I need two of this T-shaped piece, and then I'm gonna find the thinnest area of my leather, and that's where I'll cut these little gussets out of. It says two to three ounce, just like the rest of them, but the, you know, different sides of pieces of the hide have different uh, thicknesses, I guess, um, of leather on them, and so I'm gonna look through these scraps here, find the thinnest ones I can, and that's what I'm gonna use to cut that gusset out. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these pieces out. There's no secret to it or anything. Um, and when I come back, we'll, uh, we'll be ready for the next step. All right, folks, so I got all my pieces cut out. Um, here's all the small pieces, the, the two gusset pieces, the two tea pocket pieces, and the uh, other credit card pieces. Sorry, let me turn off the air conditioner. I always forget to turn around and hit that because, well, I think it's hot when I turn it off. Anyway, um, and then here's my uh, my piece that we did cut out earlier for the uh, the zippered pouch, and then underneath here is the one that I've cut out for the back uh, of my wallet. So what we're going to do with this piece is we're going to glue it to our cork. If we were just making the the uh, clutch as normal, the breezy clutch as normal. Um, it wouldn't, I mean, you can line it if you want to, but we wouldn't be really doing anything with it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it right smack in the middle of this piece of uh, cork right here, um, flesh side to this fabric side here, okay? And then I'm going to cut the cork out about three-eighths of an inch larger on all sides than, than the, the leather, because once again, it has to fold over the edges of the leather to create nice edges and stuff because cork does not um, doesn't burnish or anything like our leather would. Okay, so real simple. I am going to take an ink pen and I'm going to lightly draw a line around my actual wallet back here. That way I don't just slather glue all over the place where it doesn't need to be. I say that. First, I'm going to find an ink pen. All right. So I'm just going to take an ink pen. I'm, I'm doing it very lightly. I don't need to do it heavy. I don't want to use a marker because I still don't have the experience with the cork that maybe what if a marker bled through? That would be terrible. I don't think it would because the glue does not bleed through, but still not a risk I want to take when I could just use an ink pen and be guaranteed success at least guaranteed success with that part of this <laughs> all right so and check that out i just drew on my leather the good news is that's going to be in a place that will not be seen because again this cork is going to fold over the side but please be much more careful than i was and don't do that um, now I'm going to take my, uh, my standard um, contact cement and I'm going to put it on the back of this and inside the lines of that. Um, I would be willing to bet you could use like this Super 77, the spray glue from 3M. I bet it works great on this, but I don't have a can of it in here and I don't like the overspray that it's caused. So I'm going to um, just use my... Uh, uh, contact cement that I'm so used to using. Um, people ask a lot about our contact cement. It's made for us by a company in uh, St. Louis. It's really good stuff. Um, but it's not Barge, it's not Masters, it's not any of those um, name brands. It's just it's a chemical company in St. Louis that makes this stuff for us. And I really like this stuff. I, I, feel, I feel like it does a great job. It, uh, it sets up fairly quickly and uh, it doesn't get all uh, thick and stuff inside the in the in the jar near as fast as say barge or masters or any of the other name brand ones that I've used so that's not to say it doesn't get thick don't get me wrong <laughs> leave it in there long enough or leave the jar open it'll get thick on you Ordinarily, I'd have a piece of paper or something under my leather, but seeing as my over 
overage can just go on the piece that I'm going to glue next. It'll be all right. So there we go. This piece is ready to set aside. Now I'll slather glue all over this. And you can see where the glue is. It darkens the material. I was really afraid of that the first time I used it with the cork because I was worried that it was going through, but it, it's not. Um, when I look at the, the finished side of the cork, it's, there's no evidence of where the glue is versus isn't. So that's good. That being said, I'm not really prepared to take and uh, pour this stuff everywhere or anything. this we want it solidly um, connected to the back of that uh, wallet so that it doesn't like, bubble and look crazy we want it to look nice on there all right I'm gonna set that aside for just a half a second and while we let that glue set up I'm going to skive these little tea pockets and all I'm going to skive is down around the most narrow part of the, the base here. I'll skive down this side, across the bottom, up the other side. I could use my good fancy skiving machine, but that uh, doesn't prove to you that I know how to actually hand skive once in a while. So I will go old school and uh, use my little Osborne 925 safety skiver. And uh, I'm just skiving a little bit off because I want... Um, on the inside uh, of the, the wallet pockets, I don't want to see the bulk of the transition um, where one layer stops. So there we go. It's not a ton of scouting at all. It's actually pretty light. Um, but I'm just kind of skiving those three little edges down to a feathered edge. Especially that corner right there. The corner is the most important part because it's going to be the part that you will see, um, you know, pro pro protruding from the back side or uh, from the, the, the layer that covers it if, if we don't do a good job with it. Could use a new sharp blade on this skiver, but I think I'll make this last skive about it. Of course, I believe my good friend Mr. George Strait must have sang that song, Famous Last Words of a Fool. Change your blade if you need it, folks. Um, I did get lucky and I didn't need it, but I probably should have just not tempted fate and changed my blade. Alright, back to this. So I'm just going to lay this on top of that smooth it out. Use my little squeaky toy and run all over it. Get it good and flat. Okay. Just like that, folks. So, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to trim this cork. And again, I'm going to do it about three-eighths of an inch from the edge of the leather because it has to fold over the sides of the leather to, uh, to complete this project. All right, so I'm going to get my uh, handy-dandy maker's ruler here. It's got an eighth-inch grid on it, so that makes the sides where it's not curved very easy to trim. And then when we go around this area, we'll figure something out. But the flat spots are pretty easy to trim at, 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 at three eighths of an inch.
Okay, for this top part, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and uh, hope that I do a good job keeping it approximately three eighths of an inch away from the curve. Maybe I will, maybe I'll start over. I don't know. There we go. I don't think I did too bad there. So, what I'm going to do now is um, I can use glue or I can use the double sided tape and keep it a lot, keep my line a lot cleaner and more accurate. And I do like clean and accurate. So, I'm going to go ahead and put double sided tape just on the very edge of my leather. Okay. Let's say somebody stole my scissors. But it was me. I stole them. Okay. So on these straight edges, I'm just going to place this stuff down. Then on the curved edge, we're going to get a little tricky with it, but we'll get her done. Okay, so on the curved part, um, with the paper on the back of this, it's a little bit more difficult, but once we pull the paper off, it'll stick better. But I'm just going to try to follow the curve, and I'll have a couple of little, like, waffles, I guess you could say, or um, spots where it just doesn't lay down very well because we're going around a slight curve here. But I'm going to push it down as best I can, and then once I remove the paper from the back of the tape, it'll, it'll press down much better. Um, we are going to sew this project up on a machine. Um, there is going to be another video very soon on making the Breezy Clutch just with a standard leather back and uh, hand, uh, hand sewing it um, because we've got some other big surprises coming down the line here. But this was the mystery box and I'm trying to get the video done on it. Um, you would machine sew it the same as you could hand sew it. Um, there is one slight difference that I find easier on the machine than, than hand sewing, but we'll talk about that when that time comes. Now, I have found that it can be difficult to um, do the corners here. It doesn't do like leather where, you know, I kind of pinch it all in and, and get it into the corners. So what I like to do is, with cork, is I will cut a little square out of the corners of the cork. Okay. And then after I'm done cutting the, the corner square out, I'm going to 45 degree this part. Okay. Now I realize that if you're good at what you do and can eyeball and judge stuff better than me, you can probably do all that step in one fatal swoop. But fatal is the word that comes to mind when I think about it. But I'll try. So I need to line this sucker up on the corner here. And get it as right at a 45 degree angle for those pieces. And I'll just cut it across. Okay, and that way when I fold this part up and then that part across, they, uh, they won't overlap and create a bulky area. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to start folding this over. Um, for anybody that has a hard time pulling the tape off the back, or the paper off the back of the tape, using like a scratch all or something pointy like that 
really helps me. Uh, that was a little trick Jenny Sue taught me one day. Works great. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stretch and push that um, cork over as hard as I can. And it's just barely going to cover that quarter inch tape. So it, basically it takes an eighth of an inch to roll over this thinner leather and then a quarter of an inch to cover up the tape. Okay. And then when I get up to here, I've got, got some other stuff i got to do to go around that corner up there. So I'm just going to kind of work my way up to it and then stop once I get up there. I'll stop right there. I didn't do a very good job with this corner. I should have cut it a little bit further out and that would have closed that gap. But instead I cut it all the way down to the leather corner and I shouldn't have done that. So um, keep that in mind when you go to cut yours. Cut it maybe an eighth of an inch off the corner and you won't have that little gap that I've got. Um, the gap's not gonna hurt anything, but as far as professionalism goes and, and the look you want it to have, that's, that's not exactly desirable. That is called a mistake. And like any mistake where you've cut something too short, you can't make it grow back. Okay, so we're at the top. Okay. Now what I like to do when I'm at a big rounded area like this is I will start up here in the middle and work my way down to the edges. Okay. I'm just going to take push little pieces of it over. It almost looks like a pie crust, right? Like that. And then I can go back and push those other areas down. And once I sew that, that'll that'll all flatten and look nice. But for now, it does not flatten and look nice. It just looks like I pushed a bunch of stuff over. All right, I can get my squeaky toy after it and. And I press it down really hard because it'll be a minute before I come back to sew this and I don't want it to come off. There we go. So there's what it looks like on the outside. Um, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and poke our holes or punch our holes for our snap. Um, I did not punch those in the original cutout I did. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put my template right back on top of here and make sure it's nice and centered. The template's not exactly going to fit anymore because now the cork is larger than the template. Okay. I'm just going to take my scratch all and I don't know if that's, yeah, that'll be noticeable enough. I'm just poking a little hole where these holes are going to be. That way I can come back with a hole punch. Uh, this is a line 24 antique brass snap that we're using and I can come back with a uh, hole punch that matches that snap all right I am going to go ahead and set this part of the snap down here but I'm not going to set this part up here until after I've sewn it, just because it's kind of close to the to the stitch line. And uh, if using a sewing machine, you're going to want that stitch line to be uh, free of any obstructions, such as a giant snap. Ugh. I never set my snaps on a cutting board because I can dent my cutting board and make it to where that area is not as good. Okay, it's got my very king line 24 snap setter here. Put the uh, small end of the setter over the snap, drop the peener tool in it, and go to town on it. Making sure I keep it straight up and down so it doesn't if I let it lean, then it'll push that snap to one side or the other as it sets. And that's not cool. Still did it a tiny, tiny bit, but not enough to worry about. All right, again, I'm not going to set that top part until after we've done some st 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 stitching. Now, back to our other pieces here. We have this piece. 
and it needs a zipper. And somewhere on my desk is a zipper. All right, I'm going to set up the sewing machine, or well, let's go ahead and glue this in, or stick this in. Um, for these zippers, um, I found their Tandy carries a roll of double-sided tape that's only an eighth of an inch wide. So it is super duper narrow compared to our smallest size, which is a quarter of an inch wide. So I do not mind at all going to them and getting tape when I'm doing my zippers. I love our tape, but I can't get it in this size, so I'm just going to put it on both sides of the uh, zipper opening there. Just like that. If I use the quarter of an inch, it sticks out from under the bottom of the tape. And then, you know, now you've got sticky stuff of it, uh, that's um, open on the inside of your, your zipped area here. And that's, that's just not going to be good at all. Get all nasty and stuff will stick to it and stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to do my best to center this zipper. I'm going to leave the back end of it just flopping at the end because I'm just going to trim it off after I sew it in. But the front end of it, I'm going to try to line up right at the end of the opening. Okay, and I'm just going to barely pat it down a little bit, turn the wallet over, and look. Back here, I'm centered pretty well, but up here, I'm nowhere near centered well. So I need to recenter it just a little bit. There we go. Pretty well centered. I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to set up a sewing machine to, to sew up uh, this, this area, and then we can start doing our credit card pockets. All right. So here we are at the uh, Cobra Class 18 sewing machine. It's kind of a lighter weight machine. I'm using size 138 thread. I'll be stitching this at about 8 stitches per inch or so, which is the same as I'd have done if I was hand sewing it. And all I'm going to do is simply sew directly around the uh, perimeter of this wallet. I'm using a brown thread because it's what was already on this machine. Um, I couldn't decide whether to use this machine or the 26. And to be perfectly honest with you, I, um, I probably should have used the 26 because I'm going to have to use it here in a little bit. There's an area of this wallet that you either have to hand sew or you have to have a cylinder arm type machine. So when I get to that part, I will have to switch over to the class 26. When I sewed through the back of that zipper area, this is just a nylon zipper, so there's no real danger of it. You just have to make sure that you're not hitting any of the metal stops or anything as you sew through it. Um, you do risk damaging your machine. Um, if you're lucky, you'll just break a needle. If you're unlucky, you'll knock that sucker out of time or bend the needle bar or gosh knows what else, and it, it can get real ugly real quick just because you hurried through a zipper. Alright, when I get back to my original stitch, I'm just going to stitch back over my first couple of stitches here. And there we go. We're done. Now we're going to go back to the desk and we're going to arrange our, our card pockets. And um, we'll have to do a little bit of stitching on those. And then this is uh, going to be ready to finalize. Um, I call it the breezy clutch because it's such a breeze to put together. Um, I really, that's, that's, I couldn't think of what to name it, and I was like, well, it is, it is super simple to build, so. 
Um, the back of the zipper, I'm just going to cut it off like it never was there. Okay, if that frays a little bit, you can burn it with a lighter if you want. But um, yeah, you just need it out of your way because when you fold this in half, you need to be able to sew it down. All right, so back at the desk we are. Now, here's what we got to do next. You've got your tea pocket and you've got your um, base pocket here. Okay, and you can go ahead and burnish the edges of them right quick, and I, and I think I'll do that. Um, as we're always preaching the professionalism of it and everything, if I leave that edge unburnished, it's not very professional at all. So I'm going to do a little bit of edge in here. This is a very king size double zero, very small ledger. I'm going to do the backs and the fronts of all four of these pieces, because there's two per side. in mind which area I just did. That's what stinks when you're using such a small ledger. Sometimes you can't even tell. But it makes a difference. Um, I'm going to use some Ron's Edge Rub and uh, just burnish those, those little edges right quick. So, got my can of that stuff and I need to grab my uh, canvas over here. I need to refill my Ron's Edge Rub canister. I think there's something growing in it. That. If you use one of these little canisters, um, they're available from uh, Ron's Tools. I don't fill it past the top uh, felt pad that's in there. Reason being is because you want that stuff to soak up into the brush. You don't want the brush sitting down in it where when you pull it out it's just sopping wet with this stuff. Because if it drips on your project it will leave a permanent mark. never hurt anybody. And it'll look much nicer too. I'm going to burnish uh, the tops of each of these um, credit card pieces. So all four of them I'm going to do the, the one of the long sides on. And uh, when we come back we'll show you how I glue them down. folks so I just did uh, on these I just did one of the long edges and then on the T pocket I just did the longest edge so here's how I line these up I'm sure one day I'll be smart enough to like measure it and figure out exactly where it is so I don't always have to do it this way but this is the way I'm used to doing it I take my uh, my base pocket here and I lay it right up against the bottom edge of the piece that's going on and then I take my tea pocket and put it right on top of it. Just like that. Okay. Now, I very carefully hold that one down. Um, somebody's having a honking contest outside, guys. I'm going to pause this until they're done. Alright, I think they're done. So, what I was saying was, I take my base piece put it right on the edge there where it needs to be 
and then I hold this tea pocket piece, I slide it in until the bottoms of the tees are right smushed up against the top of that base piece. Okay. Just like that. And then I hold the tea pocket and remove the other one. And I scribe me a little line right there at the bottom of it. And that way I know where it belongs. So what I'll do though is, since that's been skived, it's a little bit weak. So I'm gonna put my ruler on it. Again, making sure it doesn't move, very important. Okay, put my ruler on it here and then I'll just scribe this little line right down it. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here with the other tea pocket and, and cover piece. And I'm also gonna make sure that I don't accidentally switch which one's on which side even though I'm pretty sure I cut them out just right you never know but I'm going to do one side as an example here and then we'll cut camera and just like a good cooking show when we come back our pie will be done at least this section of the pie all right I'm going to take my glue brush I'm just going to glue right along the bottom of this tea piece like that and then I'm going to glue just above that line that I drew there we go and those two are going to end up sticking to each other so I'm going to give that glue a second to set up while we talk about a serious mistake that I made. When gluing or um, when sticking this uh, the sides of this down, I forgot to put the daggum gusset under it. Okay, greatly apologize for that, but that's how I roll. I'm going to pull this back up just on these two sides here, about that much of it, and I'm going to put the gusset piece underneath them, and then I'll put them back. This is where I hope people watch the entire video and then do their project. Let's see if we can get the tape to come off there. Sticks to this stuff real nicely. But I've always said I'll show you my mistakes and that way maybe I can show you how to fix them. There we go. That'll help a lot getting some of the tape off. And what I'm doing is this entire gusset piece right here needs to go inside that, inside that seam. So, I'm going to put it flesh side down. And then I'm going to wrap that back over the top of it and stick it back down again. Okay, but first I'm going to, I'm going to take that little edger and I'm just going to edge that a little bit to give it some rollover room. double-sided tape here now down here at the very end I'm not overlapping this part with it um, because this is going to be two completely separate sewn areas new. 
pull the toy out here, I'm going to scoop the toy. There. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I'm going to pause it while I do, because I'm doing the exact same thing again. Alright. Got those glued back in. I'm going to go back to my, uh, my tea pocket here. And I'm just going to lay it right on that line that we created and that we glued. Making sure that left to right we're also centered before we press it down very hard. It should come right out to the edges of the, uh, the zippered area. Okay. So there it is. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it back on top of that piece and check my measurements and make sure everything's good to go. And then I'm going to glue it down. So, a little bit of glue up under the tabs of the tea pocket, all the way down, around, and back up under the tab on the other side, too. And then on the back of this piece, under three sides. And again, I'm going to do this on the other side of the, the zippered uh, pouch as well, with the other pockets that we've cut out. I've had people ask about these glue brushes. Um, Peter Main showed us a little trick where I trim the end of that. That br br brush is normally twice as long as that. We kind of trim the end of it off and that will uh, help you to more accurately place your glue. Um, I'm going to wait for that glue to set up. I'm going to pause it and I'm going to start on my other side. When I come back, we'll stick it together. All right. So we're back. I've got glue settling right there. Um, but we're going to go back to the, the one we were doing over here and get it nice and glued in. Again, I want the top of this section up against the, uh, the T pocket of the, the, the top section and it'll look much nicer. If I've got a little bit of gap down here, nobody will ever see it, but if I've got a gap in between there, people will see. Okay. All right, um, so I'm going to continue sticking this other side here, and um, then we've got to well, what we've got to do is stop being in a hurry. Pull that back off. I've got to sew down the bottoms of uh, both these tea pockets. I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and just sew right down the bottoms there. Okay, um, I apologize folks, I know that I've screwed up a couple of things on this video and um, I sewed those bottoms down right there. So I'm going to replace this area, this piece that I just ripped back off. Thank God that glue hadn't really set up that well because this glue is pretty good stuff. And normally you can rip your leather trying to get that glue to come back up. Not really sure where my head's at today, but apparently it's not in the breezy clutch. Alright, so on the other side though, I'm going to do the exact same thing, and uh, now that that's already sewn, I'm going to put glue around those three sides, and then on the bottoms of those little tabs, and then around three sides of this, not the, not the side that's been burnished, and then I'll stick it down. When I come back, we'll figure out where we're going to sew them in the centers to separate the four card pockets that these make. Okay. Got all four of those pieces sewn together, or not sewn together, but stuck together with glue. I'm rubbing my excess glue off there. Now what I'm going to do is find the center. Um, and I'm going to draw, scribe a little line up the center of both of these. And I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew up those centers. Let me find 
Where in the world is my... There it is. All right. So there's the middle of this side. All right. Here's the middle of this side. Now, I'm not going to draw a line all the way across, um, but... What I am going to do is draw a line just from the top of this pocket down to the bottom of that one and then come over here and once again top of the pocket down to the bottom of the other. And now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew up that side and, and, and I'll, I'll lock my stitches in, sew up and then lock my stitches in again and then I'll do the exact same thing over here. sewing backwards and I'm just going to sew right up that little line I created. Okay. And then when I get to the top of the top pocket, I'm going to back stitch. Three, flip it around, do the exact same thing again. Okay, now I am going to fold, I'm going to glue all four sides of this and fold it in half. Once I've done that, I'm going to sew up the bottom of it, but I'm not going to sew the sides. Um, I'll show you in a second why, but I will do all of the edges. All right, I'll get them nice and now what I'll, I'll sand them and get them nice and flat. I'm not going to burnish them just uh, the side ones just yet. I'm going to just sand them up and get them nice and flat because that gusset, of course, still has to sew to them. So here we go. Again, I'm just going to put glue on all four sides up here. Dog Myra's going nuts out there for some reason. And when we close this down, this will create that zippered pouch for the middle of the wallet. Okay. All right, I'm going to pause the camera, let this glue set up for a minute, and then we'll fold it in half. All right, we let that glue set up a little bit. Now we're just going to fold this sucker over, get the corners nice and lined up, squeeze it together. Just like that. Alright, we're going to go back to the sewing machine. 
we're going to sew two things. We're going to sew along the bottom edge of this, and then we're going to sew this whole piece all the way around, but we'll do it in certain orders. Alrighty. Get everything nice and stuck there. Alright, so here we go. See you at the machine. Okay, so this piece, like I said, we're only going to sew the bottom because the sides will be sewn up when the gusset's attached to it. And I'm just sewing about a 3 sixteenths of an inch or so from the bottom. for a moment. Now, this piece. The first thing I need to do is I'm going to fold those little gusset pieces back for a second and I'm going to sew across the shorter straight edge of this. I'm going to back stitch it and then I'm going to go forward with it. under I gotta make sure that it stays folded out there. I'm not using my edge guide, no particular reason, I'm just using my finger as my edge guide, I'm not letting that leather or that uh, cork piece go any further than that. Alright, so that was the easy part. Now we'll do the rest of it. Clip that off and get rid of the strays. All right, so we're going to fold these back under where they're supposed to be. And I'm going to start at one end right here, back stitch, and then go all the way around to the other end. I will put my edge guide down so that I can use my fingers to um, move stuff around and, and have my hands more available. But here we go. I'm going to back stitch first, all the way up to that corner where the other piece was, or where the other sew line was, and then I'm going to go forward. got to make sure that the that your edges are still curled under where they're supposed to be and stuck especially once it gets up here into the round part um, you just got to keep checking it and make sure that they're where they're supposed to be sometimes you can feel it pop up as it maybe hits the edge of the machine as it comes across the table or something like that this corks um it's a little bit squishy I guess is the best word for it um, that stitch pulls pretty tight into it and uh, that's a nice trade, I think. I think it looks really nice once that stitch is pulled tight in there and it looks good. And here I'm just letting it roll right around. And again, there's absolutely no reason you couldn't hand sew all this. Just, I'm using a machine because I'm going to have to hand sew one of these in a couple of days anyway. And I just hand sewed one just a few days ago to use as a, as a product sample. So, yeah. I don't really see the need to hand sew them all. You want to be cognizant when setting this stitch line. Um, that you know how much fold over you have on the back side to make sure that you're actually catching it with your, your needle you know because if you sew off of the fold over on the back then you're defeating your purpose because this is supposed to hold that down okay and this is where we find out how we did 
We did good. All right. Good job, guys. Go team. All right. So we did real nice. It, it's laid down nice and, and flat. We caught all the pieces that we need to catch in the stitch line. Everything looks good. So we're going to go back over. Well, no, we're going to sand something first. All right. While we're right here, I'm going to use my Cobra burnisher here. And I'm going to sand this edge, this edge, and this edge. So let me... Uh, Okay, um, on the burnisher, I keep it turned down as slow as it'll go uh, when sanding because you, you do have a very high probable, probability that you can burn your leather. And burnt leather not only smells bad, but it's actually really hard to get like sand off a burnt spot. The other thing is I, I don't apply a lot of pressure. I just kind of let it set up against it and I run it back and forth. I tried to push hard again it creates unnecessary friction and you're going to burn your leather burnt leather doesn't burn as well it smells terrible all right there we go got rid of all the glue and kind of evened up those sides a little bit so that i can round them with a uh, edger So I'm going to use a little bit bigger of an edger. I'm going to go to a Bear King, I don't know, I'll pull a one and a two off the, bear, the bench here and see which one does better. I'm thinking the two might. Um, I don't want to edge the, the, the sides yet. I just want to edge this bottom piece here. And there's no real reason to burnish it because it'll never be seen. Um, hang on, I'll show you where that is in my sample wallet and you'll understand. That edge is under, eh, under there. Like you'd have to rip this thing inside out to see it. So there's not really a reason to burnish it. I just uh, edge it so it looks nice. Now what we're going to do is We have to fold this out like that. Okay. Thank you, babe. Look at Janie Sue. My favorite color and everything. She knows how hot it is in here because she sits in here too while I make a video with the air conditioner off. <laughs> All right. So I'm folding these out. And then I have to fold this thing to get it ready to sew to this thing. Okay, it'll be like that. And then we'll fold it over and the other side of the gusset will sew, uh, sew to that. But first, we're gonna glue it. Okay, so I'm gonna glue just on the last quarter of an inch here and then also the same right here and then I'll do the same over here. And I'll lay this on there, get it all nice and straight, and then fold it over. This is a tricky part. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, but this is how you can sew this thing on a machine and not have to sew this part by hand. Uh, when we do the kit version of this, I am going to show it sewn by hand, um, and it's a little bit trickier because we don't do it this way. We actually wrap this gusset around the um this we wrap it around this and sew it down and then fold it over and sew it to to the outside but again that's a hand sewing thing if you um, want to do it on a machine you're not going to be able to sew it that way I do want to be very careful with my glue brush not to get glue down there on my cork because I haven't messed with the glue on the actual cork but I also don't want to mess with the glue on the actual cork. Something tells me it would be messy. Okay. 
So I'm going to let all this glue um, set up for a few minutes, get it good and tacky, and then I will uh, come back and show you how I'm going to stick it. Alright, so here's what you do is you take the zippered part and you put it up here at the end. Okay, and I'm just going to barely put it at the top part of that gusset. And keep it nice and straight, the gusset on there. Okay. Just like that. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Put it right against the top. Squeeze on there good. Now we're going to kind of close the wallet up around it, making sure that the gussets are sticking where they're supposed to. Okay. And it's easiest to just go ahead and do one side and then come back and do the other side. Just take your time, work it to where it's good and flat on there. take one of my uh, little binder clippy things here and I'm just going to put it right there on the top where that pressure point will be. Actually I'll put one down here too. Looks like it tried to bubble a little bit so that'll help squeeze all that together. There we go. Right there at the top. Now I will tell you this is easier to do all this if you sew it to the middle part first and then bend it over to sew it to the outside. But again, that's not sewing machine friendly to do it that way. So I'm just going slow, getting her all good and stuck. bubble down here but I think I can work it out. It does help to go from the bottom up and that'll alleviate the bubble issues. Okay. Alright, now what are we gonna do next? We're gonna grab pliers. Actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another clip here and I'm going to let this set for a few minutes while I go and trade my uh, thread over on my sewing machine. And I'll put my dark brown thread on the that class 26 over there. Um, and then, like I said, that's where I need that cylinder arm machine for this project is to sew those two areas. So I'm going to pause this while I go do that. All right. I am now over at the class 26 sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pliers and reach in here. I'm going to pull this gusset out to one side. Okay, being careful not to pull it so hard or far that it comes off the other side. If it does, that's cool. We just glue it back. You can line your pliers with a little piece of leather or something to keep from marring up your, uh, your project. But what we'll do... Put it right under there, and we're going to sew it on. So we'll start with our back stitch, and then we'll go forward. Just my 
my stitch length a little bit for this. It's a little thicker here. There we go. All right, now I'm going to go forward. Being very careful not to sew this to the outside piece on that bottom, okay? Got to keep it on just that gusseted area in the middle there, or you will regret it. And when I get to the top, I'll do a little bit of back stitching. And there it is. Okay, pull that thread out of there so you can see what we did. If I can get my finger around it. <laughs> there we go. Alright, go ahead and trim off these threads here so I can get it off the machine and show you what we did. We just sewed right up along there. Now, while you've already got it pulled out, it's pretty smart to go ahead and, and sand it and uh, even burnish it before you pull it out the opposite side and do the other side, okay? In the, um, keeping in mind to save some time though, I'm not going to, to worry about that right now because this video's gotten long enough. So, I'm gonna push it out the other side here and uh, get ready to sew the other side down in the same manner on my pliers. When you're pulling it through, make sure that it clears that cork roll over there at the very base. That's what I'm having a hard time with right now. It's caught on it. There we go. And then I just hold it down here and give it a pull. Okay, and that's enough. That's all I need to get that other side sewn. Okay, exact same manner, folks. We're just going to do the other side now. Start out with our back stitch and come back forward. And again, I really do prefer to hand stitch this. Um, you can get a cleaner gusset every time. Um, but I mean, with a little practice, this will work, and uh, it is a lot faster, of course, using the sewing machine. Okay, so sew that side down. Trim my uh, my threads here. All right, see you back over at the uh, the desk. Okay, again, there's going to be um, trimming and edging and stuff like that right there that will get done. Um, but in the essence of saving time on this already one hour and 14 minute long video, I'm going to uh, go ahead and set the last snap and uh, pull this one done. So, now we have the top part of the snap cassette. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the button cover. And what I call the cup, I'm not sure the proper terminology for it. That, that may be correct, I don't know. Now we're going to set the large side of our snap setter down over that. Drop our peening tool down in the middle of it. And this one you got to make sure you get it down good and tight. You don't want that thing wobbling around or it will come off when you try to set it. And there it is, set. So there we have made, if it weren't for the stitch length or stitch color, um, identical clutches. All right. Oh, and the interiors are different too. But anyway, there it is. This one is finished minus the edges that I'm still going to finish. I'm just going to burnish those edges right there. And uh, that's all there is to it, folks. So 
I uh, hope you enjoyed this project. Again, um, you know, you don't have to cover it with cork. You can make it out of solid leather. I would just cut that exterior piece out of a uh, six to seven ounce, um, six to seven ounce leather. You can tell the air conditioner's been off for a long time because fat guy's sweating. So we're gonna call this done. Um, I really appreciate you watching. I'm sorry for the mistakes that were made. I promise I'll have my head in the game for the next video. Um, a lot going on around here right now, and so I do apologize. Uh, but until next time, I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply. If you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe to our channel. And uh, until next time, have a great day and make it with Maker's.